now. Back in the mid-1800s, tens of thousands of Chinese were shipped to Cuba to work on tobacco, coffee, and sugar plantations. At its peak, 150,000 Chinese immigrants and their descendants were living on the small Caribbean island. It was one of the largest Chinese populations in the Americas. Today, there are less than 300 ethnic Chinese left in Cuba. As correspondent Michael Voss reports, those remaining are determined to rediscover their Chinese roots. A group of dragon dancers perform on the quayside in the old port of Regla on the far side of Havana Bay. They're awaiting the arrival of this small white boat. Aboard are some of the few remaining ethnic Chinese who were born in Cuba. It's a symbolic reenactment marking the 165th anniversary of the arrival of the first Chinese immigrants to this Caribbean island. It marked the start of a long history of Chinese migrants. Many of their ancestors still live in the Barrio Chino, in what is today a rundown part of central Havana. At one point, this was the largest Chinese community in the Americas, outside of San Francisco, California. In June 1847, the first ship carrying contract workers from China landed here. Historian Teresa Maria Lee is director of a Chinese cultural center in Havana. Justamente ya se estaba eh, librando una batalla por eliminar la trata negrera y justamente la opción era traer colonos chinos que llegaron de forma masiva a nuestro país a partir de esta fecha a trabajar fundamentalmente en labores agrícolas. En aquella época eh, las labores fundamentales eran el cultivo de caña, el tabaco y el café. Regler is the same port the Spanish used to bring in slaves from Africa. Some of their descendants were also on the quayside, participating in the anniversary festivities with dances that have strong Afro roots. The Chinese were treated almost as badly as the slaves. Sold to plantation owners as indentured servants, they had to work for eight years before being set free. La mayoría fueron hombres, pudiéramos decir que el 99% de esta emigración eh, fue de hombres. Bueno, podrá imaginarse usted, todos estos hombres solteros se unieron fundamentalmente a negras, porque eran sus similares en cuanto a, eh, a estatus social. De ahí es que viene la famosa y hermosa mulata china, cubana, de la unión justamente de la negra con el chino. Those connections resulted in a population today of hundreds of thousands of Cubans who can claim an Afro-Chinese ancestry. And one of the most famous just may be the late surrealist painter Wilfredo Lam. Born in 1902, his mother was the daughter of an African slave, his father a Chinese immigrant. One of his works, sold for four and a half million dollars at Sotheby's in New York last month. Then there's General Gustavo Chui. Angered at the discrimination against blacks and Chinese before the revolution, he joined Fidel Castro as a guerrilla fighter in the Sierra Maestra Mountains. Later he went on to command Cuban troops fighting in Angola. Esos chinos naturales, más los que murieron y los que se fueron, dejaron una estela de chinos, es decir, descendientes, una gran cantidad de descendientes, nosotros somos descendientes de chinos. Y en la guerra hubo tres generales, pero hubo muchos coroneles, muchos tenientes coroneles, mayores, capitanes, mujeres chinas que combatieron en la sierra también. Armando Choi also fought in the revolution and in Africa, one of three Cuban Chinese who rose to the rank of general. Realmente la comunidad china, por la participación de los chinos en nuestra guerra de independencia, es muy grande. El pueblo cubano está compuesto de españoles, africanos y chinos. Y realmente, por desgracia, los chinos originarios están muriendo, quedan pocos ya. 
Today, there are only a few hundred Chinese people still living in Cuba. Amongst them, the Chang family. There are three generations of Changs living in this tiny first floor apartment on the edge of Chinatown. The Chang family are one of the few who've married within the community and tried to keep the traditions alive. 70-year-old Esther is herself a third-generation immigrant. It was her grandfather who came here almost a century ago. Her husband, Roberto, left China as an 18-year-old to seek his fortune as a watchmaker in Cuba. Any regrets? Algún Ninguno. Aparte, me gusta mucho Cuba. Mi nombre es Germán Chang. Their son, Germán Chang, works in the printing trade. Like the rest of his family, he's had the opportunity to visit relatives in China. They remain committed to retaining their Chinese roots. Nosotros tratamos, dentro de lo posible, dentro de la familia, mantener esas costumbres. Es decir, el deporte, ellos practican Tai Chi, practican Wushu. La comida se cocina no parecido, pero tratar de que se asemejen con los ingredientes chinos. My name is Lester and I'm 12 years old, the grandson tells me in Chinese. In his free time after school, he's learning to read and write with Chinese characters. La gasona en allá por, por salud, allá donde yo hay veces yo voy para poder conocerlo, para la cultura y el idioma que ellos tienen. Lester Chang was one of those invited to be aboard the boat which docked in Regla. He's also an enthusiastic follower of Wushu martial arts and participated in several of the big open-air displays which were part of the week-long set of anniversary activities. He first started taking classes as a five-year-old. Havana boasts a large and well-developed school of Wushu, or Kung Fu, and Tai Chi is also widely practiced here. Today, only a minority of those involved are descended from Chinese immigrants, but cultural activities like these continue to fascinate many Cubans. And in this anniversary year, the authorities in Beijing have paid for a member of the Chinese Wushu Association to come to Cuba to lend a helping hand. The most recent wave of immigrants came in the 1950s after Mao Zedong's revolution in China. Amongst them were merchants and businessmen who'd supported his opponent, General Chiang Kai-shek, and had links to Taiwan. Cuando triunfa la revolución, un porcentaje considerable de estos chinos acaudalados emigraron hacia Estados Unidos. Lo que esto provocó un decaimiento de, de la vida del barrio chino de La Habana. Since then, the whole area has fallen into neglect. Some of the Chinese clubs and societies have managed to survive, and efforts are now underway by the Cuban government to restore the district to its former glory. 
China is one of Cuba's major trading partners and political allies. But it's a shared history which goes well beyond commercial and ideological ties. That was Michael Voss reporting from Havana.